Hello, John here from rchelicopterfund.com. Uh, just doing a few videos today on RC servo operation. And this pay, this, these videos are helped, meant to help augment my RC servo page on my website, uh, which I'll link to below in the description. I just want to show, kind of help, hopefully these will help show how a servo actually operates. Uh, some of the more abstract um, concepts such as frequency rate, PWM signals, that kind of thing. Um, to show all this, we're just using a standard old analog oscilloscope. For those who don't really know what an oscilloscope is or what it does or what it measures, basically it measures voltage changes over time. Unlike a voltmeter, which just, you know, measures voltage, uh, this will measure any changes in that voltage. You know, a voltmeter won't show that unless the changes are really slow. But, you know, modern day electronics, you can have, you know, tens, hundreds, thousands, even millions of voltage changes per, per second. And that's what this is going to show us. Um, as far as connectivity, if anyone's got a scope and you want to hook your own system up to check things out, uh, we've just got, you know, we've got our radio here. We've got a standard receiver that's uh, hooked up to the radio. I've just got... Uh, and a servo extension, in this case, plugged into our rudder channel. You can plug it into any channel you want to test this out. We're powering it off of a 2S RX Lifey battery. And as far as our scope connectivity, um, we've got the scope probe hooked up to our signal wire, which is the white in this case, and the ground of the probe wire hooked up to the ground or the negative of the, uh, of the extension there. And we've got the servo plugged into it. So as I move the stick, you know, the rudder stick, you'll see the servo move and we'll be able to see what's going on with the signal on the scope. So as many know, or as I, and as I explain on my servo page, the average frequency that comes out of these, meaning how many times it refreshes, uh, the signal is refreshed that's going to the servo, is 50 hertz, 50 times per second. And we can verify that on here and uh, hopefully that'll help. Um, help you understand it a little bit better. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to zoom into the scope here, so bear with me. Okay, so now that we're zoomed into the scope, what we're seeing here is we are seeing the uh, PWM signal, um, pulse width modulation, and the way it works is the shorter or wider the pulse dictates where the servo is going to be positioned. And in this case, I'm just, so you I'm just going to uh, position this so our, the first PWM signal that's showing up, I'm just going to line it up right to the end, edge of the uh, graph there. And we'll just reposition that, get that bottom, that's our ground reference voltage. Uh, I should mention on an oscilloscope, voltage is measured on the vertical, the time scale is on the horizontal. So all these little ticks are representing a voltage spike. And then it goes back to ground, voltage spike, back to ground, voltage spike, back to ground, and so on. Um, Right now, uh, we've got it set, as far as volts, uh, one volt per division. So every one of these little blocks is one volt. And we've got one, two, three, about 3.2. And that's pretty standard for an RC uh, servo uh, PWM signal. Its, its voltage will be 3.2, regardless of what your input voltage is into the receiver. Um, so even out of a gyro or a uh, fly barless unit, which I'll show in another video, because those have got higher, generally they've got higher uh, output frequencies. But just to, um, just to see what's going on here. So again, that's our zero reference voltage. And every time we get a little voltage spike, our PWM spike, it's about 3.2 volts. Now at this resolution, you can't really see the changes. You might be able to pick up these little lines are short or are, are, um, are varying in length and that's what PWM stands for pulse width modulation we're modulating the width of that signal um, and that dictates what position the servo is in but before zooming in on one of those we're just going to check out what the frequency is remember I said it should be at around at about 50 Hertz that's the standard and if we actually measure that we're as far as our time goes on our horizontal scale, we're measure, uh, I've got it set to 5 milliseconds per division. So every one of these blocks is 5 milliseconds. So 1, 2, 3, 
four blocks times five is 20 milliseconds. We get another pulse. One, two, three, four times five, another 20. So you've got one of these pulses every that start or refresh every 20 milliseconds. And if we figure that out as far as frequency goes, um, frequency calculation is one divided by the val or the number. So one divided by 20 milliseconds is 0 0.05. There's a thousand milliseconds in a second, so we'll times that by a thousand to get our actual hertz, and it's 50 hertz. So that's uh, that's what the 50 hertz rate is, and what the 20 millisecond uh, frame rate would be, yeah, if that makes any sense. Hopefully. Now we'll, we're just going to zoom in on the time scale. Uh, we're going to go from 5 uh, milliseconds per division up to 1 millisecond per division. So now basically what we do, we'll just reposition this. So instead of seeing all these little guys, a bunch of them, we've basically zoomed in on one. And now you'll be able to see how this, as, as that PWM signal lengthens, it will move the servo to its full rotation in one direction, center will be in our center position, and full uh, rotation in the other direction. Uh, I'm just going to reposition that right in the center. Now, you've probably heard that standard analog servos, they're centering, they're often referred to as 15 or 1520 uh, microseconds. And that just means they center at 1520 microseconds as far as the uh, width of your PWM signal. And right now we're on a scale of one millisecond per division. So I'm just going to reposition this to right there. So one millisecond is the same as 1000 microseconds. So if this is, right now our stick is centered, our servo is centered, so we would expect to see roughly 1520 um, microseconds. You know, 1500 is, is good enough. Um, so we'd, we'd like to see about 1500. So there's a thousand and a half, so 1500. Remember, that we're at uh, one millisecond per division, so that would be 1.5 milliseconds or 1500 microseconds. And you, on my page, as I explained, servo travel range is generally anywhere from 1000 to 2000 uh, microseconds, so 1000 would be full rotation one direction, 1500 centered, and 2000 would be full travel in the other direction. So at this scale we'd expect to see that line basically go uh, f between that f the full travel of that block, 1500 being in the center, 1000 being on the uh, far left of the block of the grid line, and 12 or 2000 sorry um, on the far right. So, and that is exactly what we're getting. So, that's uh, kind of nerdy stuff, but that's how PWM signals work for RC servos. Uh, they're getting an, a, a 15 or a, anywhere between 1000 and 2000 microsecond pulse width on the PWM, uh, pulse width of the PWM signal. And as far as frequency goes, they're getting that that is being refreshed 50 times a second every 20 milliseconds so hopefully that uh, helps clarify some of that stuff we're next going to be looking at what the signal looks like coming out of a higher frequency uh, generation device a fly unit